All right, guys. Well, welcome to the next video as we work through how to use After Effects. In this video, we want to begin to learn how to um, do some animation and how to make things look like they're moving in the screen. So we're going to all start off with this basic, um, this basic composition that has a few different things in it, and we're going to learn how to use something called keyframes. So in here, if we look down at our layer panel, you can see that we've got a number of things within our composition that we want to be able to use and edit and make it do some different things. So as we look down at our layers, we've got, and I'm going to zoom into this here and kind of begin to see that a little bit better. So in our layers, we've got um, layer one says JStream. That's our text layer, and you can see we've got this T for our text. We've got the Jayhawks text. Then we've got a few other things. We've got our green star. We've got our red circle. We've got our yellow rectangle. You see that these have the star because these are just shapes that we put in. And I use the shape tool like what we did in the last video to do that. Then uh, we also have the Jayhawk logo. You see it's got this one that's uh, kind of like our image. And I put this image in to begin to work with that. And then we've got our background layer. And basically what I did for that is I just took a big rectangle and drew it all over top of the whole thing. And then I locked it so that um, you won't be, I don't want you to edit that. So just leave that locked. Um, and that way you won't be able to change that at all. But the other things on here, we're going to change and do some other things with and kind of make, move them around and um, make them have some motion to it. Okay, so let's begin to look at how we can actually do this. So... Um, we want to kind of make each of our different things move and do some different things and um, kind of have some motion as they go through. Before we get too far into it though, um, one of the other th kind of key things that we'll need to know how to use is this. This is our zoom button. We can hit fit and that will just fit it in or we could hit a certain percentage like if we want to zoom in to kind of see what we're doing. We can put it at 100. That will zoom it in. If we click on the hand tool, remember we talked about the hand tool, we can pan around then and we can see um, each of the things a little bit closer then as well. Um, if we're working on something, you could also use the space bar to pan. So like if we were, let's zoom back into 100. If we hit the space bar, it'll momentarily give us that hand so that we can move around and then it keeps it on the selection tool for us. So that's kind of a helpful tool to know as well. Okay, so let's, um, let's do a few things here first. Let's start off with, um, let's start off with the green star. Okay, so once we are on the green star, we've clicked on it here. What we want to do then is hit this drop down arrow. And let's make sure we start with how it will probably be shown. And you'll see that we have contents and transform. Well, then what we want to do is hit the transform button, our arrow there. And that gives us our anchor point, our position, scale, rotation, and opacity. For this one, um, let's do this. Let's make it rotate, and we'll be able to see that rotate pretty well. So we're going to rotate it. And so in order to rotate it, before we start, what we want to do then is we want to go and we want to click on this stopwatch uh, looking thing right here next to the rotation one. Now, what that will do then is when we click on it, it will turn that blue. You will see also that it adds this button here that says add or remove keyframe at current time. And so that uh, is how we're going to um, add our keyframes. You'll see over here that it also adds this like blue diamond into it as well, right at this keyframe or at this time. That means that it has added a keyframe that says that at this time, zero seconds, and on this line, which as we go across, we see is for rotation, 
that the rotation is at zero times at zero degrees, basically. So it's just basically exactly how we want it to be. But what we can do then is we can make it rotate and we can make it, you know, so that at five seconds it's going to go through a certain number of rotations. Now, if we wanted to just rotate around in the middle, we're first going to have to change our anchor point. So you see up here, this is where our anchor point is for the green star. So what we need to do then is we need to come click on our pan behind or our anchor point tool. And we're going to come and click on that and drag that basically as close to the middle as we can get it. So I think that's probably good right about there. Okay. At that point then, I'm going to switch back to my selection tool and I'm going to drag my timeline all the way across to the end to the five second mark. Now you'll notice it didn't do anything. And that's okay, it's not supposed to do anything yet. But if I come down here to my rotation, I can show how many times I want it to rotate for. So I could either put in how many degrees, or in this case if I wanted to actually just kind of spin in a circle, I can just put five. And what that's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna spin that star in a circle five times. When I hit return, you'll see that it adds this another, another keyframe down here. And so now it knows at this time that it needs to have uh, rotated five times by the time it gets there. So if I kind of scroll back, you'll see that as I scroll back through, it's going to be rotating my star. And if I hit the space bar, it will kind of play it, and as it goes through that time, by the time it gets to the end, it will have rotated it five times. So without too much work, I was able to just make a little bit of an animation there, rotating my star. Okay? All right, let's try something else. Let's try the circle. All right, this time though, I don't want to rotate my circle. I'm going to make the circle just look like maybe it kind of bounces a little bit or something. And so that is the position. So again, initially, as I'm at the zero, and always make sure that your, your time is at the beginning of where you want it to start, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on the, magna, or on the stopwatch. It adds my um, keyframe in, and again, we make sure that it's underneath the red circle that we're working. We can see also that we have these the dots around our red circle. And so let's maybe say about halfway through, uh, which maybe is about here, that I want this to kind of come up here, and it now adds a keyframe there. And then I'm gonna slide my cursor, and I'm going to say at that point then, come down here, okay? So again, you can even see like this path that it made that shows what it's doing. And as I scroll back through, you're gonna see that that's gonna go up and then it's gonna go back down, okay? So we've now added some animation for this red circle. Um, we can also, let's do the yellow rectangle. And this one maybe what we wanna do is just change the opacity and so, um, with my yellow rectangle selected, again, making sure that it has the dots around it or that I've clicked on it down here in my layers panel. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch next to opacity. It adds a keyframe right there that says, remember that at this time that it's gonna be at 100%, and then I'm gonna move that through. And let's say that by the time it gets through there, let's put it at zero and say that at 0% then it should, or at the end of it, it should be at 0% opacity. And so it adds this new keyframe down here that says by the time you get there to do that at a, down to 0%. And then you can see how it kind of fades as we go, okay? All right, um, what about our logo, all right? Maybe with our logo, we want to scale this. So right now it's at zero or it's at 100%. But again, with having my Jayhawk logo selected, making sure the dots are around it or that I've clicked on it here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to add a keyframe onto the scale, 
and leave it at 100 and then I'm gonna go to the end and on this one then I'm gonna make this go to 300 percent just make it get really big and again adds a keyframe there and as I scroll through you can see that it knows just to scale that up and then the final thing maybe that we'll do is we'll do our um, J stream J Hawks and we'll move that to the middle so again I'm gonna click on J stream I'm gonna go to my transform I'm gonna go to the position this time and this time what I can do I, if I want that to go right to the middle in my line panel over here and making sure it says align layers to composition I can just click on that and make sure I've um, set my keyframe first but I can click on that and it's going to put it right in the middle so before I do that though I'm going to click on my position I'm going to set my keyframe so that it knows uh, started at that point I'm going to go through all the way to the end and now at that point I'm going to add that keyframe to move to there and I'm going to do the same thing for the Jayhawks as well so I'm going to click on my Jayhawks making sure I scroll back to there and click on my transform for my position hit the stopwatch scroll all the way to the end click on the align and it adds that keyframe okay so now I can go back to the beginning um, I've got a few options I can hit the space bar and you'll notice at least initially that it's creating this green line as it goes because it's rendering it and so it's not going to run in full time at least initially once it goes through then it will go through all at once and so if I kind of click off of it then I can kind of see how it runs through and it'll just keep replaying over and over again so pretty easily and pretty quickly I can create um, and a little bit of an animation and making it move different things around okay so that is your goal is to just take the preset um, image that I gave you and just add different things to it add change the rotation change the position change the opacity change the scale and the position use the different tools and uh, making sure that you start with your keyframe put your first keyframe at zero and making sure you click on your stopwatch then moving throughout the time and then as you change it it will add that next keyframe as you change okay so go ahead and give that a try and then um, we'll um, share those after you have finished